Howdy! How's everybody doing today? Hope you're well. I'm Mr. Bob from the North Carolina Zoo and welcome to another episode of the Neighborhood Naturalist. Today we're in a different part of the yard and uh, forgive me I have some sweat stains on my shirt because I've been moving some stuff around. Hopefully we'll have an opportunity to get a little sweaty. What we're going to be doing today, I'm going to show you how to plant a very very simple pollinator garden. Now pollinators we're referring specifically to a lot of insects and a lot what of What we hope is that the flowers that grow in here will be nourishment and nutrition for bees, butterflies, moths, hummingbirds, and animals Most like that. flowers generate a sugary liquid that's down in the bottom of the flower bloom that's called nectar. And nectar is what the animals come in and they feed upon. It gives them nutrition. Think about when you make a hummingbird feeder, you put sugary So water. what happens then is the flowers grow, the birds come in, along the way they'll pick up pollen onto another, another flower and it helps propagate the flower. Out here we have a tiny little patch of these uh, pollinator flowers and this more than anything is kind of like We'll call it a way station. And what that means is, as the bees are flying from over there to over there, there's a long period where they may not find anything to eat. This will give them that opportunity. So we're going to plant a small pollinator garden. It's real easy. You need seeds, you need dirt or soil, and you need a container. We'll add the water and the sunshine a little bit later on. Now as far as containers go, you can do one of these anywhere you like. You can plant them in the ground, you can plant them in some kind of a planter. Mr. Bob is incredibly thrifty. I don't like necessarily throwing things away that still have a useful life. Uh, in many instances, I am accused, rightly so, of doing something known as upcycling. And upcycling means this. I grab something like these pots right here, they come into the zoo greenhouse and normally they're targeted for recycling. Before they get recycled or discarded, I'll turn them into a planter and give them another crack at a useful life. Now this one would be very, very small. The one we're actually going to be planting today is this interesting green item behind me. You see, one of my neighbors was actually in the process of tossing out this turtle sandbox and it doesn't have the lid anymore many of you are familiar with this sandbox so I decided rather than letting it go to the landfill let's make a planter out of it so I grabbed it brought it home and now I'm going to turn this into a planter I did have to do a little preparation and you may need some help with this part normally the sandboxes like this are solid on the bottom and planters benefit from having holes in them so that excess water can run out. That actually happens uh, in flower areas in the ground. The water that the, uh, the flowers don't absorb, rather than drowning the roots, it seeps on down into the ground and recharges the groundwater. So I actually grab the cordless drill and put a uh, pretty large bit in it, drill some holes in the bottom of these. I'll show you when I walk over there. This is actually a very, very easy project to do, and it can have rewards for a long time. I'll mention the seeds in a second. Uh, let's go ahead and get started. What do you say? So we have our frog sandbox over here, and you'll notice I did add some holes in the bottom so the excess water can run out. There's a few there. There's one Oop, right over there. It's kind of hard to find these. <clears throat> so I'm going to lay this here on the ground. That's our container. That's our flower bed. Over here, in these two yellow bags, uh, I actually have some garden soil. I get this from the local home and garden center. It costs about $8 a bag. Sometimes I'll mix it with the local soil. We have a lot of clay here in this part of Randolph County. So for this one, I'm just going to use the straight stuff right out of the bag. If I have to get into the second bag, it'll take me a second to open that up. Bear with me. We 
we're going to need a little more. I set this right here so I could lean it over. These bags weigh about 40 to 50 pounds, and these have been out in the rain, so they tend to be a little bit on the wet side. That makes them even heavier. A really good useful tool for this is a garden rake, so you can spread out and break up the clumps. That nice dark soil, that says I have lots of nutrients. Pack it down a little bit, just like that. By the way, you don't have to be super duper neat. You can slop a little over the sides and that's perfectly fine. Oops. Okay. Plants that can go into your pollinator garden. I went over to the home and garden store. It's not far from here. Picked up these. They cost about $5 a packet. What you want to look for. These say right here, wildflower, bird, and bee mix. You don't have to necessarily know what kind of flowers they're going to be. The reason I have two different packages, one says the flowers emerge in 42 days. That means they'll be ready to bloom in about a month and a half. The other one, make sure I have the right one, uh, this one has plants that emerge about 70 days. That means this is going to be about two and a half months. So these will come out later. Most of these will bloom all summer. So we'll take our seeds and we'll spread them in here and then I'll show you what I'm going to do with the rest of the dirt. These are the 42-day seeds, and just spread them on the top, like this. Not even going to use the whole package. And these are the 70-day seeds. Again, not using the whole package. You want to cover them up with a little bit of dirt, and here's the fun part. Instead of pouring this out, I'm just going to reach in here with my hands and spread some dirt out. Okay, it's soil. I'm sorry. You're right. Sometimes the most fun things to do outside get your hands dirty, and that's great stuff. That's about it. I'll drag a hose up here in a little while, and we'll uh, add a little water. The sun will move around. Actually, as the sun moves that way, it'll start hitting this. This will have some good sun. We'll have some really pretty flowers in a while. Not going to wait on them to come up. It'll take a while, so we'll just leave these as they are. That's all you need to do to get your pollinator garden started. We'll check in a little later on and find out how this is going, probably in about a month. We'll see what's coming up. We'll see what looks like it's blooming. That's really it. You've upcycled the container, planted a pollinator garden. You've done stuff that's going to help out the birds, butterflies, and the bees. It's great stuff. Thanks again for inviting me in. I'm Mr. Bob, your neighborhood naturalist for the North Carolina Zoo. Y'all have a great day and take care of yourselves, all right?